baby. Joe and Chris. My buddies in the Razor. buggies in uh, pro turbo class freaking badass race. Nothing like race fuel in the morning. Turbo.
be badass. <clears throat> I think there's about 70 cars in Pro UTV. Oh, airing it out. Oh. Here's the monster, guys. Can you talk to him or can you see him? Huh? Can you talk to him or can you see him? You can talk to him? I'm on mute because it's... I just aired that thing out. <laughs> oh, so swapping out right in the first shit. Short wheelbase is a little tricky. Well, that's why you see all these races with a longer, a longer wheelbase. Oh. YouTube, what is up? I thought I'd do a little voiceover for you guys uh, with this driving portion. I only have the one camera looking back at the drivers, unfortunately. We were so busy trying to get the car ready, I really didn't get time to set up my cams, which sucks. But next race, hopefully. Um, I think Chris looks a little nervous, but uh, this is his first. This is his first desert race in uh, side by side. He was my uh, co-driver in the Baja 1000. He's a good driver, but here he goes. 
So they took off, and I know he wanted to get the lead, and his brother Paul told him that he should punch it off the jump, and he got a little sideways there and uh, was swapped out a little bit. It was a little crazy. You saw Joe reach over and put it in four-wheel drive uh, to try to keep it straight off the bumps. Um, but, yeah, it's pretty crazy, man, lining up in a... Lining up in a desert race for the first time against all these dudes. That was a good, some good air there. Uh, it's, it's pretty crazy. You definitely got to give yourself that 20 minutes to just kind of calm your nerves uh, in these races. You got to slow down and kind of take care of the equipment. So there he turns off the full drive. Um, so the Mint 400, let's talk about the Mint 400. It is 320 mile laps. So this year it was 360 miles. Um, it's known to be one of the toughest desert races uh, around. It's just the terrain is rough. It's kind of like that same stuff. A lot of it's the same as what you saw in the um, the Polaris uh, launch video. It's just, it's crazy rocky terrain. They had kind of a cool little uh, short course at the first, so they had a bunch of jumps and fun tight corners that, right, at the, right at the start finish line, which is really cool. Uh, they're doing good. So they're cruising right along. Uh, Joe, you saw Joe in my... Uh, in my Razor video too, he's driving the Razor like crazy. He's co-driving uh, with Chris. Uh, Joe's just got good experience racing, like I said, so I think, you know, I know Chris said it was nice to have him along just because he's so calm and just a really good co-driver and driver, um, and so it was nice to have him there. So the plan was to, uh, you know, get the car back, get a, get 120 miles on her, and hopefully she's in one piece, get her back, pit, and then, the drivers were going to switch. It was going to be. It was going to go from Chris to Chris's brother Paul. So, anyways, our first lap went pretty good. Uh, they were hauling butt. About I don't know. About 30 minutes in, they started complaining about the suspension being too soft. And what had happened is what we. I'm pretty sure we know what happened. The springs, the stock Can-Am springs. We changed one of the springs. We left one spring stuck and it literally overheated uh, and so it, it lost its spring. When we got back to um, to Utah, we put on a spring dyno and it just had no, it had no spring to it. So we didn't have enough compression and they were bottoming out the car a lot and so they had to slow down and uh, take care of the car. So Chris does a good job of just keeping it, you know, keeping it in one piece and cruising uh, in the race. It was uh, it was pretty badass. We had good radio communications, which was so much better than Baja. In Baja, man, the communications were so tough for us in Baja. So we had good communication with the guys. At first, we were just on the cell phone. They had Bluetooth, and so we were just hearing them talking their, uh, through their comms on the cell phone, which was really cool. Um, but yeah, everything was going good. Clutch temps were good. Engine was running good. Like, everything was, was good, especially... This is literally our first time in this car. Um, we had only tested just that little bit in the desert, you know, a couple runs, and that was kind of a mistake. We never did any kind of long, long runs with it. We only just did short runs through whoops, uh, and the suspension felt good. But once it once it started heating up and we got in this rough terrain, and it was just constant, you know, constant pressure from the suspension, it, it just didn't, it, it wasn't up to the task. So... Uh, I know he's going to make some changes for the next race, but yeah, that was kind of a problem. We had to go down to 50, 60 percent uh, speed. But anyway, so here's the in car. I'm hoping next time I'll get some more of the of the outside of the car. But I had to do the camera this way um, because otherwise it it would have got dusty and you wouldn't see anything. So this way is the only way to get like a good picture for you guys. But anyways, pretty rad race. Um, and a lot of fun and everything went fairly smooth on the on the first lap so coming up here we'll get to our first pit i'll let you guys watch that and then i'll come back and uh, kind of tell you about the second lap all right cool thanks Awesome.
Upstairs. Did you guys miss my 10? There's 10. That's okay, it. I'm left. I'm left. Check the tires. The tire pressure. Tire pressure. Huh? Oh, Where's another tire pressure gauge? Check torque. Where's the torque wrench? Right there. Is the socket on it? Yeah. Socket's right by it. Where's the torque wrench? <laughs> The torque wrench, the torque wheel. Tires look good. Where's the 19 though? I don't have the 19. Where's the socks? Is this that? No. Joe, did you go pee? Dude, I haven't needed to pee like day one. Minute one. Microfiber. Who was the one in the truck? We need to get the guys on the harnesses. Is this what yeah. Who wanted the microfiber?
Okay, so they came in for their pit. Everything looked great. The car was in good shape. Um, unfortunately, I don't know why this was, but we could not add any compression. Um, that's what we were going to do. I called the shock tuner, and for some reason we had a, all the compression in it. I think it's because we started out thinking that it was good with lower compression, and it just it just wasn't. So we were t we were maxed out on our compression. So they'll be retuned for the next race. All right. So here's Paul. Um, he's never raced in a side by side. He's done a lot of other car and off road stuff, but never done any desert racing. So I think he was a little nervous. And then the, this is the worst thing that could happen: is you have another guy pass you, and then you start over driving a little bit. And it's really hard to kind of just turn it down for those first few minutes. I feel like in any kind of racing, you've got to just get past that adrenaline, that adrenaline uh, point and just drive solid. But so anyways, that guy passed him. I feel like he starts going a little harder here. Um, this is only a few miles out of the pits. Um, they're going along pretty good. Coming into a few of these corners, getting a little sideways. And... Uh, let's see and boom so uh, <laughs> got a little sideways was sliding went right into a rut and just had a nice little soft uh, a soft roll everything everybody was okay it was no big deal um, they got out of the car and kind of assessed it here I know Joe had a little hard time getting his uh, getting his calm link off but uh, that's what happened that's racing you know we were running the car in two-wheel drive because the night before when we were testing, we felt like we were hearing stuff in the front end, and so we felt like the four-wheel drive was maybe messed up. Um, and so they were trying to, they didn't want to have the front uh, diff break, and so they're being pretty uh, cautious on using four-wheel drive, which sucked because, I mean, it's obviously going to be a lot more stable in four-wheel drive. Uh, here they decide they're going to try to pick it up and dip it over. And that didn't go so well. Um, so they had a with uh, with Best in the Desert. We can't go out and help them. They have to wait for the Best in the Desert support truck. They, they got there pretty quick, probably 15, 20 minutes. Uh, hooked up to the car and uh, got it pulled back up on the on the four wheels. So yeah, it's a little different with Score. You know, it's your job to go out and help your crew. And that actually is pretty fun, I think. I think I like score better. Uh, well, I mean, Best of Desert is cool, too. You get to kind of hang out more. It's a little more relaxed. Uh, but it's a little more challenging, I think, when you're, you're as a pit crew, you have to go out and try to help that buggy and keep her going. It's kind of, it's kind of fun. Everybody that's involved in the team is, like, you know, is a serious uh, part of that race. But... Anyways, they got it put back over, uh, pulled back over. Joe gets into it just to get it off the race course, uh, so they can kind of look it over. I don't think there was like very much damage. Uh, it was kind of funny when they told us they had rolled it, you know, freaking five minutes out of the pits. But uh, that's racing. So this was our first go, and you know, I think Paul did okay. He just got a little, got a little excited, and just overdrove it a little bit. So they pulled off. Uh, and they're just going to get back ready and get back rolling here with the race. But they handled it, you know, honestly, it wasn't too big of a deal. They handled it pretty good. Um, and they were back up and going in, in no time. And we were still doing pretty good. So we had, this is, you know, we've got 125 miles under our belt. And uh, they're just going to get ready and uh, get going. But for the most part, I will say the car, the car, the suspension was our biggest problem. The car felt good. The build was good. Uh, but we just screwed up on the suspension. We were trying to make it so comfortable, and it really was. But we just never tested on any kind of, like, longer run, you know. And so we just didn't realize that the suspension was just going to get so, so hot and just not work, not really work anymore. So it was kind of a mess, but they got back going, started with a pretty good pace, um, and we're cruising pretty good. Then I think this probably happened um, because of the rollover, but they started having some engine problems and they couldn't really figure out what was going on. Um, about 
10, 15 miles past where they tipped it over. And I think what happened is one of our, one of the wiring harnesses probably came loose um, when they tipped it and it got close to the exhaust and started, started melting stuff. So they ended up having, I think it was an O2 sensor wire that got melted and it just, the, the motor kept going in and out and it was, uh, it was confusing them a bit. Um, and uh, so that coming up here, they're at the flats actually, they're back towards the dry lake bed here and they're rolling along and then it just starts, it starts acting up on them. Uh, that's another good thing about having Joe is he's, you know, he's a professional mechanic, he knows what he's doing. Um, but yeah, you know, he's telling them to get going to haul ass here and, and uh, the car just doesn't want to go. So, uh, Paul's just like, it won't go. Um, Anyways, my camera unfortunately cut out here, but I'll get to uh, the next clip. They got they got the electrical problems fixed. They decided they're going to have Joe drive to try to make up time, and Joe <laughs> drove the living uh, crap out of the car. And uh, with the suspension bad, he kind of overdrove it a little bit. I think he you know he wanted to get it back, but drove a little too hard. And then uh, this happened. Yeah. Got a bad axle, but we repaired all this. Yeah, the axle's broke. The trans the, the engine's broke. The transmission's broke. Rear subframe. Oh, it's we got a tranny that, that is. Yeah, there's no chance. Correct. Plus we were too no soft. skid Maybe plate. Riding higher, and we weren't every like. Got, dude, you know how she got like literally. We just overheated the suspension. Got a blown. The ruts are this clutch cover. The whole way. Like had a little electrical fire in there. <laughs> And this one's a this one's a bad one. Uh, no uh, no shock shaft it is destroyed. So what do we get? Like a hundred and almost like hundred and eighty miles or something. We're gonna send them pictures and be like, is it that or we throw this away? That rear end needs to, well, he said you can build it after it gets messed up like that. Yeah, so how they build it's, it. It's so weak. I looked at it before we got into crazy shit. Half this it's was, way thin. When this thing burnt, I looked at it, uh -huh. and this thing was almost off. We're like, well, should we do anything? Let's go. So factory. Oh, Any, everything fact, well, except this. Okay, this this would have gone. Like this would have gone in another 10 or 20 miles. Whoa. So, next race. Got some improving to do. Nuts. The helicopter pilots are so awesome, dude. Just flying sideways. <laughs> 